up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Project Blaze version 1.3 official based on Android 12.1 and this is the 12th July 2022 build and I have been using this ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro for a couple of days now and I would say this ROM definitely feels different at least in some areas let me show you right now the about section first but before I do that, this is how the home screen and stuff looks like. I will show you everything in detail. In the settings panel, this is how the settings panel looks like. And in the about section, this is how it looks. It looks beautiful. We have this like processor and stuff showing up over here. Like the specs are mentioned. And in the Android version section, we have the Android version as Android 12 L. And if you keep tapping on it, you will get the clock of Android 12. You will get the Android 12 L Easter egg. The Project Blaze version again is 1.3 and here is a device maintainer's name. I don't know how to read that, but yeah. And we have the security patch of latest July 5th, 2022. And the stock kernel, you can see this is the Excalibur Plus kernel. The Linux status is enforcing. Talking about the system panel, this is how the system panel looks like. And in the gestures, we have the quickly open camera and stuff. And we have the system nav gestures. In the settings of it, we do have the swipe to invoke assistant. As you can see and we have the left edge right edge customization then we got the pill length and there is no pill radius customization but that's fine the full screen gestures are there and the IME button space you can actually customize let me go back the two button and three button navigations are there normally and we have the one-handed mode that works fine too and the swipe direct screenshot is there and if you're taking a screenshot there is the shared edit delete and the Google lens feature we also got the playback control, double tap and the prevent ringing options and the system updater. And of course you can check for updates whenever there is a newer update. And if you don't know how to actually clean fast this ROM, you can check the guide from the description box below. Right now, let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks like. Of course, you can tap and hold in a blank area and you can add any particular widget that you are willing to. And here, let me actually show you. And if I add this clock, you will get the options. And if I go with this particular clock, you can see I can resize it, of course. And if I tap on it, it does this kind of animation and the animation actually looks beautiful. This is the Android 12 L animation. No problems whatsoever with that. The other widget that I'm using is working fine too. Let me show you the stock launcher settings. This is how it looks like. This is by the way, the launcher launcher. I think it's present by default here. And with that, let me actually show you that we do have the restoring backup option. So that's great. Also, we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. As you can see, it's working fine. And I just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it has unlocked. Now the animation sometimes does feel a little bit glitchy. Let me show you one more time if I tap the fingerprint scanner. As you can see it unlocks fine but it does this kind of a little bit of flickering is there I would say. And yes you will see this particular lag a little bit like when daily driving but that's fine. This device does not have a really powerful CPU. So it's a little bit hard to run Android 12 L I guess. But yeah, we have the Google's Discord page to the left and we have all the customizations of launcher, launcher, no problems with that. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer and actually swiping down gets you to the notification panel. Well, I think there is a Project Blaze update for Redmi Note 10 Pro 2. So that's great. I'm making this video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, by the way. Some things are really great that we are getting this particular dialer as the default dialer. This is the oxygenized kind of dialer. So you will get the call recording option and stuff in this particular dialer. No problems with that. Also, we get this particular messaging app. And with that, this is how it looks like. I think this is a oxygenized messaging app or it might be a open source messaging app. Not really sure. But yes, it does have the delivery reports and stuff enabling option. No problems with those. Also, there is a calculator app and this is how the calculator app looks like. This is not like the Android 12 kind of calculator app, but it looks like that. But here, let me actually show you. This is actually the Google's calculator app. This is how it looks. It looks beautiful. No problems with the animations again. Here we also get a clock app. This is again a separate particular clock app. As you can see, looks beautiful, I would say. But yes, you do have the Google's clock app too, which looks like this. But this clock app and this calculator apps are like a little bit lighter, I would say. So yeah, you can definitely use them or just leave them as it is. Now talking about the stock camera, you do get a ANX camera or MIUI camera by default here. That's just awesome. It takes a little bit of time to actually load up. But yes, once it loads up, as you can see, it works fine. I have taken a couple of selfies and stuff. It works great. No issues whatsoever. The front camera, if you're noticing, is working perfectly fine. No problems even in the portrait mode. As you can see, it's working fine. There is no like force closes or something with the portrait mode. But in the more settings, I think slow motion and stuff may not work. But in the video settings, let me actually show you there is the 1080p 30fps for the front camera 
and if you switch to the rear camera there is up to 4k 30 fps option for the rear camera videos also in the pro mode you can shoot pro photos and stuff so yes a next camera is not a problem it's present by default so that's great now talking about the normal things yes the ir bluster and stuff is working fine this app is taking a little bit longer but i hope you can see that on the ir bluster section it is actually working perfectly fine here by the way the dm info also shows as l1 here so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. Also the safety net passes right out of the box over here so you should not be having any problems while using banking apps on this particular ROM right after flashing it. And here I have connected to this Bluebot 411 ANC and that's why you are seeing the Bluetooth battery icon over there in the status bar. Also Bluetooth battery percentage I mean shows up in the quick setting panel. Now if you are looking at the quick setting panel this does not look like your familiar Android 12 L. So this actually gives you a Android 11 kind of experience I would say. But yes, if you're someone who like the Android 11 kind of quick toggles, you're gonna like it over here too. This actually feels really different, I could say right now. And here you can add the multiple toggles that you are willing to. I have added a couple of toggles which I'll show you right now. The Wi-Fi, mobile data and stuff is there. I don't have a SIM card in the device, that's why you are seeing the mobile data disabled. The torch is working perfectly fine. The dark theme is there and the auto rate, night light, hotspot, airplane mode, nearby share and the screen recording is also there. And it also does the Android 12 L kind of animation if you're looking at it. Looks beautiful, I would say. And of course, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time if you're willing to. Heads up, you can disable and the battery saver and stuff you can enable from right here. The data saver, do not disturb Google Home controls. Moto Dolby audio is there, so that's great. And the sound control is also there. This is how the volume panel looks like, by the way. It looks beautiful. And here, all right, so I just tapped on it. I think the UI is gonna force close. So yeah, that's the device switching option, which just force closes. I don't know why, but yeah, this happens normally. I don't think so, it will be fixed easily. But yeah, this particular thing is there that this particular device switching option actually force closes, but expanding option, which is on the bottom, works perfectly fine. And in the volume control panel, it actually shows a volume percentage, if you're noticing that. And from here, of course, you can put the phone into vibrate or silent. And again, we have the reboot toggle, the FPS counter and stuff are there. So yeah, we have all these features right out of the box working fine. No problems with those. So while gaming and stuff, it will be helpful. There is a thermal profiles too. So if you want to just hop into the thermal profiles and change some profiles for your particular apps, you can definitely do that. Also, there's a recorder. This is the like Android's like own recorder, the Google's recorder. And this actually works perfectly fine. Just after tapping on it, as you can see, it is actually like recording my audio, but I don't know if the transcript will work because here, let me actually show you it shows the currently recording but if i hit transcribe it doesn't show what i'm saying so yeah that's how it is it you can actually change the device from right here it shows pixel 5 you can also switch to phone mic not really sure how and why showing pixel 5 over here but yeah this recorder is there it's actually recording if i keep silent as you can see there is that like lower kind of frequency Jumping into the settings panel, this is how again it looks like and first let's do the display settings. Here is how it looks like. We have the brightness level of course and the adaptive or auto brightness and the lock screen kind of options are there. Then we have the dark theme and from here you can enable or disable the dark theme or schedule it. Pitch black theme option is there. You can enable it if you want a pitch black over here of course and we have the night light, the colors set to saturated and you can change the RGB over here. Then we got the double tap to wake, prevent accidental wake up and stuff. In the ambient display, we have more customizations. Let me go back in the blaze house. We have the customizations of this ROM. So if you're gonna skip this part, you can definitely do that from the seat bar. In the headline and body fonts, again, we have plethora of fonts if you're noticing. Let me go back. We have the icon pack changing option. You can go with the Acuras one and stuff if you want to, but it takes a little bit of time to actually switch to the icon packs again. Then we got the signal icons. And again, as you can see, the icon pack has changed if you're noticing. And then we got the icon shapes customization. Then if you go into the status bar items, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. And we have the traffic indicators too. Then we have the clock and date customization. You can thoroughly customize everything over here. The battery styles are there and there are plethora of battery styles like the full circle text and the icon landscape right left so you can use it with any of them and also the battery percentage and stuff you can change from right here now the double tap to sleep on the status bar is there and we have the vaulty icon or view wifi icon changing option and the colored icons you can enable also there is a colored like battery icon and stuff you can enable those but right now it's not showing the colored icon not really sure how it will work but yeah 
There's the status bar padding. I did change the padding to 1010 because it was too much to the corners I remember. So yeah, you can definitely change the status bar padding from left side or right side. That's really great. And next one, we have the quick setting panel customization. We have the brightness slider position changing option. I have it on show always on the bottom. So that's why you can see the brightness slider is always on the bottom for me. And we have the quick setting panel transparency changing option. The heads up, you can enable or disable or customize it. The reticker option is here. Also, there is a clear all button. You can change the button for the notification, I guess. And double tap to sleep again is here in the lock screen and the charging info shows up. Then we have the four small clock if you are gonna use that and the equalizer pulse options are there and you can customize that thoroughly and enable wallpaper zoom option is there the media art blur level in the lock screen option is there and we have the show media art the next one is the system settings and here we have the in call vibrations and we have the long press pod and toggle torch wake up on plug and we have the ignore secure level flags and we have the toe step icon that's it that's all the customization which are present over here inside blaze house and right now in the wallpaper and styles this is how it looks like by the way i'm using a wallpi app here in the wallpaper styles we do not get a like accent color changing option for some reason i don't know why exactly there is no accent color changing option here and in the app grid we have up to six by six app grid in the sound settings this is how it looks like again by the way volume panel again looks like this and we have the left volume panel and stuff you can enable it right now it shows enabled that's a bug i guess let me scroll down we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound charging vibration and the touch vibration per app volume control is there screenshots of the sound is there and we have the like me audio direct from here you can choose it to youth edition the sound quality with the headphone jack was great also with bluetooth it was not a problem at all and we have the choose preset option we also got the bass booster here and then we can select the smart scenes also there is no like hi-fi audio option here for the redmi note 7 pro that's normal and we have the clear speaker option as well right now let's just quickly talk about the battery and here inside battery settings we do not get the charging cycle that's kind of disappointing because other roms does have it for redmi note 7 pro but here you do not get a charging cycle seeing option but otherwise we do get a battery temperature seeing option but there is the battery manager as well and the battery saver as well and we have the battery usage also there is the thermal profiles you can choose the thermal profiles again from here but let me show you with the aku battery app i have tested the battery life here it just shows insanely that i have been getting about 10 hours of screen on time but i do have a replaced battery and yes with the replaced battery the battery life is good but definitely it's not 10 hours showing like too much i would say and you can get eight hours of screen on time over here if you have replaced your battery i would say in the health section you can see i have about 97 percent health left because again i have replaced the battery over here so yeah with this like newer battery the battery life has been great no problems whatsoever and yes the fast charging is also working fine here no issues with that now it's time that i talk about the security and in here we have the quick unlock and stuff if you're gonna use those quick unlock is working perfectly fine also right now i have completely set up the face unlock and fingerprint scanner and stuff so right now i'm gonna show you the face unlock speed because i think i have already showed you the fingerprint scanner speed that's why i'm gonna show you the face unlock so right now from the lock screen you can just swipe up as you can see right now it shows recognizing face and if you're noticing it has unlocked i have five fingers over here i'm not tapping the fingerprint scanner at all let me show you one more time as you can see it unlocks super fine with the face unlock and it works 100% of the time without any issues. One more thing is the app lock. And yes, this is how the app lock win window looks like. And if you tap the fingerprint scanner, it just opens the app and goes where you left it. So yes, app lock and stuff and fingerprint scanner and the face unlock, everything is working perfectly fine here. And talking about the overall performance, yes, daily driving on this ROM was great, but let's actually open YouTube. And in here, let me just scroll. You will see the performance over here. With this, the scrolling is smooth enough, I would say, for a device like Redmi Note 7 Pro. If you are noticing, the scrolling is actually fine, but for Twitter, it might be a little bit lagging. But for YouTube, I would say it's fine. Even video playback and stuff was fine, no huge issues at all. And I would say, if you want to go and switch to the split top and stuff, yes, split top is working fine. And let me actually show you. Okay, so I'll just show you with this like Play Store and YouTube. And here the scrolling should be working fine with both the apps and your split top like actually scaling is working fine. Also, you can just go home and go to the recent panel. This is how the split top apps will stay and you can just tap on them to reopen the like two apps together. So split top is not a problem. By the way, talking about performance here at the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. 
So I would say yes, Project Please has been one of the like most unique kind of looking Android 12 L ROMs because you don't get the newer Android 12 L look over here on the quick setting panel side. You also get the ANX camera by default here. So you can definitely try it for your Redmi Note 7 Pro if you want to. Flashing guide again will be linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.